Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Oshale and you're watching Oshi Reads. In today's video, I wanted to chat about my reading plans for 2020. Yes, I want to speak it out into the ethos and have it here on this channel to hold myself accountable, although that has been questionable in terms of how successful it's been in the past, in terms of actually holding me accountable, but we are I'm always down to try things more than one time, so here we go. So my reading plans for 2020 are as follows. As far as my Goodreads goal goes, I set my goal at 30 books. Now, I will talk about my relationship with Goodreads and how that has evolved and how that is changing towards the latter half of this video, so stay tuned for that portion. But first, I just wanted to talk about more you know, information about my specific reading plans. And for me for this year, my main goal is to read the books that are already on my shelves. I am very, very, very adamant about not adding any more books to my collection until I have had a chance to truly decrease the amount of books on my shelf and or rather on my shelves and my TBR list that is huge. So I will be shopping my own shelves, so to speak. I'm not really going to be adding too many books to my collection already. I'm gonna be reading the books that I have, creating TBRs from the books that are already on my shelves, and really just prioritizing books I already own. The second half of my reading plan for 2020 is that I plan on utilizing my local library a lot more. It's been some years since I truly utilized my local library. I grew up going to the library. I have a huge love for libraries, and I'm a huge supporter of them. I donate and do what I can, and so I haven't truly been plugged in and been able to use my local library since about 2015, 2016 or so, and I really wanna make this year about returning to the library, the year of the library, and really utilizing the books there as opposed to buying new books because what I loved about you know the times in my life that I really used the library is that I was able to read books that were highly anticipated and overhyped without investing my money into them. I was able to borrow these books, read them on my own time, and then if I truly loved the books and fell in love with the story and the author, then I would go invest and purchase the book to add to my collection because I'm a huge rereader. So I knew I would read it again. Any story that I love, I always revisit. So I want to take the focus off of acquiring new books, you know, sometimes books that I don't even like or may not even enjoy or may end up DNFing and I've just spent and wasted all that money. I will link my no buy year challenge video right now so you know kind of where my mindset is in terms of buying and buying books for 2020. But I really want to be able to take advantage of the fact that the library is free. I mean, yes, our taxpayer dollars pay for the resource and for the privilege. But if you have a library card, you're able to go check out as you know up to a certain amount of books, keep them for up to a certain amount of time, and really get the advantage of the reading experience and not necessarily have to invest in owning the book. And you know, the amount of books I own, I do want to kind of get down to a more manageable collection. I do consider myself to be a book collector, but I really thought about it, and although I do love collecting books, I would take more pride and more joy out of collecting books and owning books that I actually love. I'd love to look at my bookshelves and know that every single book on the shelf is a book that I have loved and enjoyed and will revisit, as opposed to just having books that I didn't necessarily like, just hanging out my shelves just because. Uh, so that's kind of where I'm going with my reading plan for 2020 and beyond, so I will be utilizing my local library a lot more in 2020. Another thing that I've really put a lot of thought into in terms of my reading plans for 2020 and that you all may find surprising is that I actually wanna read a lot less in 2020. And this is where we're gonna slowly segue into the Goodreads part of this video, but I have come to the realization with a lot of introspection and deep diving, journaling, prayer, and some therapy, that in the past, I would say, five to six years, the latter half of this past decade, I used reading as a coping mechanism for depression. And I used reading, reading as a coping, coping mechanism for when things weren't going well in my life. Reading has always been an escape for me. I love reading, and most days, I do read. I spend a lot of time reading, and I tend to hide away in these stories and hide away in a book. And I've noticed that I've chosen staying in to read a book 
over going out and socializing socializing a lot more as I've gotten older. And this year I really want to challenge myself to get out more and to kind of invest myself in things I used to enjoy. So I really used to enjoy, you know, doing things in the outdoors. I used to enjoy exploring nature. I really used to enjoy enjoy being a part of groups and activities and socializing and just doing things in my community. There are a lot of great events in the area that I live in and I feel as though because I've become so introverted and because I've used reading and staying home as a crutch and due to, you know, my mental struggles and my mental health struggles over the years, I have chosen to hide away in a book and in a story because it's safe and it's safe for me to stay in my house where no one can hurt me and I'm able to kind of lick my wounds and hide away from the world and be protected, right? But I really wanna challenge myself in 2020 and moving into this new decade to push my boundaries and step out of my comfort zone. And I'm not saying that I don't think it's good to be an introvert. I actually really enjoy being an introvert and I consider myself to be an extroverted introvert. So. I do enjoy socializing once I can get myself actually out to the social event and with friends. But then after the, after being out and socializing, I'm completely drained and I need to step away and recharge. And it usually takes me days to recharge from one social event. So I'm not saying it's bad to be an introvert. This is who I am. But I did used to be a lot more social, um, I would say throughout my 20s and Earlier in this pa the past decade, I just lived outside my comfort zone a little bit more. I put myself out there a little bit more. I was more a part of the community. I used to go to theater shows and be a part of groups and meetups and other events around. I used to, like I said, explore nature a lot more. I was just more adventurous and I was willing to take more risks in terms of just experiencing life and meeting new people and experiencing the world. And I really do want to get back that side of myself that I've lost because of mental health struggles in the past five or so years. So I want to read less. And I wanna read less because I wanna focus on building back those strengths and building back that social muscle and enjoying my community and really getting out there because life is short and so much of our lives revolve around our jobs and our responsibilities. And when we have our free time, I feel as though for me, I'm speaking for myself here, I feel as though when I do have my free time, I flake out a lot on you know, meeting up with friends and doing things outside of my house and I would rather stay in and read. And like I said, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I've just noticed that for me personally, it stunted my personal development, it stunted my personal growth and I just want to build that muscle back up and get myself back out there because I do enjoy interacting with my community. I do enjoy being a part of my community and getting back into hobbies that I loved. I used to do singing lessons, dance lessons, because those are two of my passions. I used to write plays and put up shows. Again, another one of my passions. I wanna maybe think about maybe auditioning for a show in my community and acting again and just getting back those parts of myself that I've lost because like I said, due to hard years and, and mental health struggles. And, and I think that just really pushing myself to step outside of my comfort zone and to reclaim those lost parts of myself and my identity um, is gonna be really good for my overall well-being and good for my personal growth. And I also feel as though to accomplish that, I will have to read less because I wasn't reading as much back then as I do now, as I have recently. So that is another one of my reading plan goals for 2020 is to read less and those are the reasons behind that. Now gracefully segueing into the Goodreads portion of this video, I don't like Goodreads. I'm just gonna come out and say it. Uh, there have been a lot of discussions about Goodreads here on this platform, so I'm not going to rant on and on and on. I'm just going to say that I don't like what Goodreads has become and what it's turned me into. What started as a platform for other people to review books and for us to share our love of books, share new books that are coming out, talk about the books that we're able to get art copies of and review early and things like that. And by art, I mean advanced readers copy, if you don't know what I'm talking about. What started as this just delightful platform for book lovers about the books that we love or don't love, 
uh, has turned into a rat race of sorts with this, you know, Goodreads challenge that Goodreads really, really pushes every year and everyone feels all of this pressure to read all of these books and, you know, the fact that it tells you you're six books behind, you're 12 books behind, you're three books ahead and it's all just, for me personally, it really messes with my mental. I do like the recording part of Goodreads, the fact that you can keep track of all of the books that you're reading and have read and love, that you can create shelves and folders and favorites and favorite lists and you can keep up with your favorite authors and participate in contests. I love the community aspects. I love the fact that you can create book clubs. My book, book club, A Seat of the Table, a, wow. Tongue is getting away from me with my words. My book club, A Seat at the Table book club, we have a pretty sizable Goodreads group on Goodreads <laughs> for our book club and I fell off of utilizing that. So this is where I talk about, okay, I don't like Goodreads, you know that, you know my reasons. Now I'm gonna talk about how my relationship with Goodreads will be changing in 2020. I will be utilizing Goodreads in a different way. Uh, before the whole like, becoming consumed with the challenge of reading all these books and all that. I used to be really into reviewing books on Goodreads. I used to really enjoy, after reading a book, going to Goodreads and sharing my thoughts. I really, really liked the way that I was able to kind of just immediately after reading a book and digesting it, to be able to transcribe that into text and into a well-written review in order to kind of record how I felt about that book at the time that I read it and share that with the community and get feedback and see other people's thoughts. So I wanna get back to reviewing books on Goodreads. I also wanna get back to utilizing Goodreads for my book club, A Seat at the Table book club, and really being able to engage with the members and you all that are members of the book club with, you know, monthly news like newsletter like letters and messages and contests and updates and discussion topics i want to utilize that part of goodreads the part that is actually really powerful which is the community aspect of it and get away from the competition of oh i have to read x amount of books and am i behind in my head and sort of that rat race side of things and go more towards the organic original side of the platform which was more about community and sharing and the love of books and reviewing and maybe even ranting and talking about books that we don't like as much so that's pretty much it for this video in a nutshell 2020 and hopefully the rest of this decade is going to be a turning point in my reading i'm really excited to push myself and get out there and to read less never thought i'd say that on this channel but yes i'm very excited to read less and because i will be reading less i will be a lot more selective with the books that i choose to read because as you all know reading a book takes time and that's time that i want to spend developing other parts of my personality and reclaiming the things that i used to love to do old hobbies and and likes and loves and I'm really excited to revamp re my relationship with Goodreads and utilize it in the way that I feel is best for me and that is going to benefit me the most and hopefully, by extension, benefit you all the most. And yeah, I'm excited to utilize my library a lot more, buy less books, have more read books on my shelves, and this is obviously going to come with the consequence of probably unhauling and giving away books because once i read a book that i don't love i'm not going to want to hold on to it that's typically how i am i already have a pile on the very bottom of my shelf on the floor of books that i am going to be unhauling soon and probably donating to my library so that is it for this video thank you so much for stopping by if you're a new subscriber thanks so much for joining the oshi reads family please hit the like that helps so much with the youtube algorithm and definitely subscribe Hit the notifications bell so you'll always know when I post. And I'm going to work also on being more consistent on this channel. Cross our fingers. Let's see how that goes for 2020. And yeah, thanks so much for stopping by. I'll catch you all in my next video. I love you all so, so, so much. And I hope you're having a wonderful day or night wherever you are. And I will see you soon. Mwah! Bye.